So welcome back. Today we're going to be testing some fuel storage solutions. I think this is going to be a really good video for the channel here. And it's thanks to one of you viewers that reached out to me a couple of months ago about this exact gas can right here, this jerry can. He sent me an email and said, hey, would you please review one of these? Thinking about purchasing some of them. Well, recently I had another one of my very old gas cans split, start leaking everywhere, and it jogged my memory. Now with mowing season and spring upon us, I need to get some sort of fuel storage. Storage. So I remembered you. We got one of these on the way. I reached out to Vivor, who sponsored today's video, asked if they'd send me this as well. We're going to look at two different fuel storage solutions. All right, so straight out of the packaging, this is how they look. I would have liked to have seen a little bit better packaging on the sides of this, but the bottoms were reinforced, the bottom and top, with some uh, protectors that you see down there. One thing worth noting, I already see this is bent that way. We're going to have to see if that affects stability or not. I don't really know that we can bend it back. Overall, surprisingly, after making it through all the shipping, everything looks good. Here's my kit with all my wheels, everything else. That all looks okay. And this, well, it looks perfect. No scratches, no dents, no nothing. All right, so I've got a little Wi-Fi endoscope here that connects to my phone. Everything is completely wireless and I have a cable that I can unravel with a little light that we can turn on on the end right here. So let's look inside of these tanks, make sure first we don't have any trash or debris that we may potentially suck up. And let's see if there's any type of coating. I doubt there is. Any rust, any issues we should know about because I know you're gonna be curious about looking inside of these, especially that jerry can. All right, so we are recording. And now we're going to go down into the big storage tank first. Let's take a look, see what all we got going on in here. So that looks like, I don't know if that's raw steel. I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts. I think that's raw steel. I was starting to wonder if it had a coating on it, some sort of gray coating, but we can see the... Uh, you can see the welds and stuff right there. Sorry for the rooster crowing in the background. He will not shut up. Look around here. But well, the good news is no rust, nothing crazy. All right, let's come over here to the jerry can. I'd imagine, all right, I'd imagine this is probably gonna look exactly the same. Yeah, there's our welded seam. Looks like just raw steel to me. I think I'm seeing red paint coating right there. Or it could be reflection, hard to say. I think that is some red paint in there. Or uh, powder coat's what this really feels like. Okay, so we're just gonna call it raw steel. All right, so overall was not complicated to put together at all. I'm happy to say it's relatively stable. There's a little bit of wobble in the wheels just because they're bushings, loose bushings, but that front bent wheel, it's not making this trying to tip over anything. And it moves around relatively easy. A couple of things to note, I did have an issue with this fill glass right here. The top thread was a bit rounded over, looked like a factory defect. So I had to bend the top thread back up. I did it with a flathead screwdriver and was able to screw this tight. Hopefully no leaks or issues there. We'll check that out. I mean, overall, it feels like you're getting what you pay for here. The pump feels, you know, a little small, a little chintzy, let's just say that and be honest here. But if it pumps, who cares? It's just a manual hand pump right here. I'm not gonna run around too much till we get it lubed up. They provided, I don't know if you can see this red liquid right here, it's almost like a Loctite. And I use that because, well, you don't want to just go wrapping this in Teflon tape or any of your connections due to the fact that that stuff's not rated for fuel. So I use what they supplied, hopefully no leaks. If there is, we'll get some fuel safe Teflon type tape. We'll wrap this up. But it's a very straightforward design. You feel right here, this one's rated for 35 gallons. They have a 30 and a 35. I'm personally not gonna fill it all the way up to 35 gallons. I'll probably put 30 in it. I don't believe in overfilling my containers. You always wanna leave a little bit of room for expansion. If you build up too much pressure and have too much fuel, well, that's where you develop leaks. Relatively straightforward spout right here, rubber coated. I'm gonna guess you've got, goodness, probably close to 10 feet of reach. That's kind of surprising actually. So you could easily go 
fill up a lawnmower, both tanks on either side, get down in a boat. That's one thing I'm always filling up. So it's gonna be a nice bit to fill our boat up with this. There's a little screen down in here to catch any debris that may go in your fill tank. This is a sight glass right here that tells you zero to 100% full. Curious to see how that works. And read your instructions. They provide a ground clamp here and what they ask that you do is ground this to a good source. So you don't wind up with any spark, any static electricity, any buildup and potentially ignite fuel. Read the instructions on the side of the tank and in the manual. You're handling fuel here. This stuff can ignite. The other good news is they offer this tank in yellow if you wanna fill one up with diesel. If this works really well, I kind of wish I had found one of these a while back, but now I have a really nice big truck mounted diesel tank. But oh my goodness, have you priced diesel tanks. You can spend well over a thousand dollars for a tank and a very basic pump and it just goes up from there. And they also have one of these in black. So if you want to designate like say kerosene, gasoline for red, diesel for yellow, they do offer those different colors. Currently online, I'm seeing these for about 240 bucks right now. Price does fluctuate. Go price other storage containers and pumps. Oh my goodness, do they get so expensive. So I have reservations on how well this really works for the price, but if we can find 35 gallons of fuel storage with a pump, all parts for 240 bucks, I think this is gonna be the answer to a lot of problems that I've been having. And now I don't have to store gas cans everywhere or deal with those new environmentally safe gas cans that spill everywhere. All right, so let's take a look at the jerry can here. It's your typical style that we've all seen forever. Three handle design up top, latch that goes through and locks the lid. So you pull that out and then it's got a lift up style latchable lid. Underneath, you have a rubber seal gasket and then they provide a flexible nozzle. It has a rubber seal gasket right here that goes over the top. All right, you pop that on, latch this down, and you're good to go. So the nozzle is designed to not permanently stay on. I wish I seen some sort of storage here for the nozzle, but I think that's kind of typical of these metal style jerry cans. So you're just gonna have to store the nozzle somewhere else. But the good news is if you have multiple cans, we only really need one nozzle. I guess you can have some backups and spares. So it's just flexible steel, kind of the look that we've all been used to. There is a little ventilation hole here on the back side to kind of help pull air in and siphon the fuel out. I'm curious to see if we're gonna have any leaks there, but you do have to have air follow in behind the fuel and this should pour out so much better than them little press spring-loaded nozzles that we're all dealing with nowadays. So it looks like it has what's a nice thick powder coat on the outside. Hopefully that helps keep it from uh, kind of scratching up. Your typical style lock that I've done showed you three different handles and this looks like it's standard size so should fit in a jerry can holder if you have one mounted on your vehicle. So it is worth noting these do have an external welded seam. That is a potential point that could rub or leak. I'm personally not going jeeping with this and beating it all around. We're just gonna store it out here to transport some fuel back and forth. Actually, this is gonna be my main fuel storage, assuming this works well. And occasionally I'll fill this if I need to go somewhere that this can't go, fill up something real quick. There's really no need anymore now for me to have more than these two. You're talking 40 gallons of fuel on hand, ready to go. That's enough to keep our mowers, rangers, and some boats going. So how well will this hold up? I don't know. We're gonna have to check it out and time will tell. I can tell you compared to the like 80 and $100 models, well, those seams are inverted, wetted on the inside and they're coated on the inside. That's what makes them cost a whole lot more money. Do take note that where these nozzles, they're obviously welded on the inside, but they have dips and indentions right here that could collect water. So if you store this outside, it needs to be covered or I would run a bead of silicone around that. I think it would just make me feel a whole lot better that water can potentially get down in here. Like I said, I'm sure it's welded up on the inside. That is a place for water to collect. I'm not 100% sure where I'm gonna store this just yet. It may go under the barn on a pallet so I can pick it up with a tractor and put it in. But the big question is gonna be, well, this is gonna be very heavy with 30 gallons of fuel. So let's go fill it up, drive around, see if we develop any leaks and see how easy it is to get off the backside of a truck. I'm not gonna use my tractor because a lot of you don't have a tractor. I'll throw a couple ramps up. We'll flip this over and see if it's easy to get up and down those ramps full of fuel. It's gonna be interesting.
All right, so the good news, I am not seeing any leaks right here. Everything looks good. Just gotta keep in mind with the fuel in here and the weight of this unit or over 200 pounds. So this is gonna be interesting. So there's no way I would put this kind of weight on the front little caster wheels. Those are designed for concrete. Always keep this tilted back and use just the rear wheels. I could see you easily bending the front ones trying to roll around in a truck bed that's got all these you know, rough high ridges. After riding around, no leaks whatsoever. Now that I just tilted this all the way back a bit far, I've seen a tiny little leak come out this right here. I'll show you that in a second. But as far as transport goes, no issues. And I am tilting this back a bit far. This is another reason I recommended not to overfill this, which I did not. Okay, here we go down the ramp with 200 pounds of fuel. Okay, well, I'm a <laughs> I thought it was going to be a lot worse than that. All right. Not bad, actually. And let's check our jerry can out. I did get five full gallons in that. All right, so after inspection, no leaks on the jerry can. Let's check out this big transport station. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit on concrete for a little bit, make sure I don't see any leaks from the bottom side, but everything looks really good. No leaks up top. So the one spot I did see a tiny leak come out of is right there and that's when I tilted this thing way back over that doesn't surprise me but I did not see any leaks from transporting all right so the real test are we actually going to get some flow out of this fuel canister unlike all these new safety cans nowadays again this top just slides right on latches it's kind of self-explanatory I go through so much fuel alone just for mowing. This is gonna be so nice. Now I'm not gonna fill the lawnmower up with a jerry can. That'll be for things like my log splitter and pressure washer and other things. I'll actually use the big pump station to fill up this because this holds 12 gallons. So hopefully you can see the fuel there pours decent, but I do see a small leak, kind of where that vent hole is. All right, so I am seeing a small drip where the spout is crimped. And I see a rubber O-ring in there. All right, so there's definitely a leak coming out where this spout is crimped in and I see a rubber O-ring in there. I don't know if it just wasn't crimped properly from factory or what it may be, but well, just letting you know, it does leak as of right now. I don't know that I can recommend the jerry can. If Vivor wants to send another one of these out, we could have a defective spout. Hey, things happen. I'll be more than happy to test a new spout and let y'all know. And just to show y'all, we're leaking right here. You can see there is a crimp and there is an O-ring down in there I can see, and it keeps leaking out the top. And depending on how you twist the spout, sometimes it gets a little worse, sometimes it gets a lot better. Looks like just a bad factory crimp. There's a crimp on both sides right there. All right, so the real question, does the pump station actually work? This is the one I'm the most excited about because I go through a ton of fuel. So I pray this thing doesn't have to be primed and it works well. This would be a killer deal if it really does. All right, let's go. Oh, wow. Okay, fuel come out instantly. Holy smokes, I hope y'all can see that. It is flying with fuel and the pump is quite effortless. All right, so let's record back this way and see. We'll check the flow rate out on this. Oh wow, y'all, that has got a huge, ooh, I'm spilling fuel everywhere. It's got a huge flow rate. Look at that stream. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be so nice if this continues to work and not give me any issues. By the way, the fuel indicator seems to work, showing just under 100%, around 90, 95%, which is how I filled it up. Again, I don't believe in overfilling containers. This is flying the fuel in there. Oh wow, this tank is already filled. This tank is almost filled up. It was six gallons, y'all. This is quicker than my big, nice, several hundred dollar diesel pump that I just put in my diesel tank. Obviously my diesel pump feels a better quality as it should, but I was not expecting this kind of flow rate. Didn't have to be primed, nothing. Now, 10 feet of hose is really nice. The problem with 10 feet of hose is actually, <gasps> the 
pump works in reverse. I didn't expect that. Look, you can pull the fuel right back into the container. I could actually, no way. Can I siphon fuel out of this with this? Yes, I can. Look at that. That is stinking cool. Okay, the reason that gets me excited, we run gasoline generators, although we're converting most everything to solar. So think about this. I have all this equipment full of fuel. Hurricane hits, can't get fuel. We've already had this happen before. I can come pump fuel back out with this, put it right back in a storage container, go over to my generator, pump it right in. That's cool. I did not think about this reversing flow. Now, the other cool thing about reversing flow is pull the nozzle out. Now I don't have to worry about draining this hose. Let's see how much of it will pull in. Look at this. It pulls. Check that out. It pulled the hose almost completely empty. Now that is cool. All right, so to wrap this up, highly impressed with the 35 gallon portable tank right here. Pumps way quicker than I ever expected. Didn't even think about the reverse or siphon function. I can see that being useful for me. No leaks, no issues. Really, at this point, it's just long-term testing. And trust me, I use a ton of fuel, especially this time of year with all the mowing, boating, pressure washing, everything else. So I can give you real results on long-term reliability, would say the pump. There's really not much else to go bad other than if we develop a leak. Sadly, the jerry can, I was loving it. I like the seal, I like the steel can, I like the design. It's just old school and it works, but we do have a leaking nozzle right here. So I'm gonna reach out to Vivor if they're willing to send another one out. I'll try a brand new nozzle. If the next one leaks, hey, we know. If it does not, I'll report it out probably on one of the mowing episodes or something and kind of give you all an update right there. Things can happen. Is it a manufacturing de defect that's kind of seen in all of them? We'll see if we test a second one. Is it a one-off thing? Very well could be. We'll find it out for you. Thank you all for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. Don't forget, links are in the description for these products if you're interested.